I'd like to have a brief look at uh, the notations that you, you might use uh, when you're um, drawing up an execution architecture. That is, you've got a diagram uh, in front of you. It, it, may, it may be a UML diagram, but it may also be just boxes and arrows. Now, in an execution architecture, there are some differences in some of these components, and we need some conventions about how to show those differences. For example, um, you have user-initiated activities. Now, these are things like the user interface where they don't do anything until a user initiates some activity and then they may call other subsystems. There are, there are also active subsystems. These are sitting there uh, continuously executing monitoring in, in some sort of an uh, execution loop, waiting for some input and uh, they deal with the input when they've got it. For example, a, a database server is usually a um, cont working in a continuous loop. Almost any monitoring system is also working in a loop. If you have some um, uh, real-time system that you know, the, real the, the controller of a real-time system is usually working in a loop, so if it's got nothing to do, it will just go around and around polling uh, for input and waiting for things. And the final type of system is a service type system where it doesn't do anything until it's interrupted. Uh, when it's interrupted, it provides a service and then essentially goes back to sleep. So a component may have more than one type of stereotype. Uh, it could be a, a, a active service, uh, for example. The, when that happens, uh, in your diagram, just uh, use the one that best captures what it's supposed to be. The notation. Well, fairly obviously, if something is initiated by a user, uh, it's quite normal to indicate this with some sort of a stick figure human attached to that component. Anything that's active would have uh, a circle, some, some sort of a circle, usually with an arrow to indicate continuous motion. <coughs> and a service, um, well, the convention, the one there is that it's got an arrow uh, with a cross on it, but um, there doesn't seem to be anything that naturally fits into it. Now, I have to also acknowledge that different um, different documentation tools have got different um, different symbols available. So don't get hung up on these particular ones. Use whatever seems to make what, whatever's available and indicates uh, a distinction between these types of systems. Not only do we need to indicate the uh, kind of uh, server it is or service it is, um, but we also need to some sort of conventions about the communication between them. So we have some sort of a component, uh, which is your, normally a rectangular box. We have a synchronous call, which as described in the last, uh, last video, um, is just an arrow. An asynchronous call is an arrow with a half head, and, and that's uh, where it just posts some information and it does not expect any, call, any feedback. A call back, where uh, information is posted asynchronously and then um, it's expecting some information to come back but we're not waiting on it. And that's a um, arrowhead with a, a, half, a shifted half arrowhead. Now there's an example of a execution architecture there drawn for the auto teller machine uh, where you have the uh, cache dispenser and the uh, card reader and the ATM user interface all, um, essentially, they're all pretty much the similar. They go through the same physical devices usually, but um, all are user initiated. But then we have the, um, the application itself, which simply provides a service and it calls the, um, the, the central service, which is an active service. So a short summary then of this uh, piece. We need notations to show uh, active service, continuous activities and services, and we need notations to show the synchronization dependencies among them.